we continue <laughs> the Leela of Krishna Prema, Ronald Nixon, in the Saints of Raj by Adikashav Das Obiel Kapoor. We're on page 304. 304. <laughs> <laughs> And we've done, just completed this remarkable episode <coughs> in the temple uh, where Krishna Prem, if you remember, had heard a voice in the night, a cold night, a windy night, of someone calling him. And he went into the temple and he heard that the calling was coming from the deity. And the deity was saying, Dada, I am cold. And this, the Leela is interesting because without any further reflection, Krishna Prem knew that it was the deity speaking to him. And he quickly, tenderly wrapped his own cloak around the deity and saw then that the deity was crying tears of gratitude. And this was a story of how Krishna Prem knew already what the deity was feeling. He was feeling a kind of sympathy or compassion for the deity and therefore could serve, like a Montani, could serve the needs before they were even spoken. And so we continue on page 304. Who could assess the value of the tears of the Takura better than Krishna Prem, the tears of the deity? He tore off the corner of his Bahirvas with which he had wiped his tears and put it in a silver amulet, which he wore close to his heart all the rest of his life. Ma tu rierasi il microfono. Italian. Italian is okay, but do you ask? I see you. Can you? Yes, good. Sorry, somebody was speaking Italian. So. Uh, uh, no, sorry, sorry. Somebody, I have no more the Italian room <laughs> now. They pop her out and put her back in. Very good. Okay, Madhuya? She gave it up. Good. Then we continue. Grateful that the Italians are hearing Madhuya Rasa's beautiful voice. Mm. <clears throat> yeah. As Krishna Prem's sadhana continued, his relationship with the deities in the temple became more and more intimate. The deities <coughs> made him feel not only their living presence in the temple, but also their graceful acceptance of his loving service in different ways. 
their merciful acceptance of his loving service in different ways. Once, Krishna Prem cooked halava pudding and offered it to the deities. After the offering, he came out of the temple, closed the door, and as usual, sat down to meditate along with the other inmates of the temple. <clears throat> While meditating, he started suddenly and said, let us go and see if the Lord has actually taken the halava. As they opened the door of the temple, they were surprised to see the, about, that about half of the halava was scooped out by the Lord, and they began to dance joyfully. One day, after the deities were made to sleep, Krishna Prem came out of the temple and locked the door as usual. The next morning, when he opened the door, he was surprised to see Radharani's golden necklace around the neck of Krishna and Krishna's golden nupura a tinkling ornament worn around the ankles and around the ankles of Radha. At once, he called the other inmates of the ashram and said, see, our frolicsome lord's amorous leela, our playful lord's amorous leela. Gradually, Krishna Prem came so close to Radharani that she began to speak to him. An example of this is an interesting episode relating to one of Krishna Prem's disciples. Sunila and his wife Arati were his disciples. They lived in Allahabad, but occasionally went to Mithola to enjoy the company of Gurudev. Once they became very impatient to go to Mithola, but they did not have requisite money for railway fare. Arati suggested that they might sell her gold bangles. So they sold the gold bangles and went to Mirtula. One day, when Krishna Prem came out of the temple after the morning service, he had two gold bangles in the hand. He said to Arati affectionately, Arati, would you tell me what you have done with your gold bangles? Arati stood dazed and silent, looking towards the ground. Krishna Prem said with a smile, I know everything. I know everything. Radharani has told me that in your eagerness to come here, you sold them because you were short of money. She has given her own gold bangles to me and said, give them to Arati to wear. I do not like her hands without bangles. He gave the bangles to her. Lucky Arati. A shiver coursed down her spine. She was bewildered and so overwhelmed with bhav that she might have fainted. <clears throat> but somehow she controlled herself, bowed down to the guru and washed his feet with her tears. 
Krishna Prem generally passed his winters in Vrindavan, in the company of his Parama Gurudev, Sri Parakrishna Goswami. First, he went to Vrindavan on February 18th, 1931, with Ma. His visit created much excitement among people in Vrindavan because he was the first European they saw in the form of a Vaishnava wearing mala of Tulasi beads and tilak and chanting Harinam. He was also the first European who was allowed entry into the Radharaman temple. There was some opposition to this amongst the Vaishnavas in the beginning, but it subsided when they came to know that Krishna Prem was truly as devout a Vaishnava as anyone else in Vrindavan. Not only this, the Vaishnavas organized a meeting in his honor under the presidentship of Sri Banamali Lala Goswami and conferred on him the title Gaura Premaniti, Ocean of Love for Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu. There was a secret behind the title, which came to my knowledge from the diary of Sri Bala Krishna Goswami. Krishna Prem did not regard Gauranga Mahaprabhu as an incarnation of Sri Krishna. He had pledged that although he was initiated into Mahaprabhu's Sampradaya, he would not accept Mahaprabhu as identical with Krishna until Krishna himself made him do so. <clears throat> Krishna, who always dances to the tune of a sincere devotee, told him in a dream, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the same as I. After this, his love for Mahaprabhu increased <coughs> by leaps and bounds. And he really became Gaura Prema Nidhi, an ocean of love for Gauranga. But do you want to comment on that number? That he did not recognize Mahaprabhu as Krishna until Krishna <coughs> came in a dream. Mm. So, at first, uh, this Krishna Prema is very connected with uh, Diti and Radharani. And I feel Radharani knows everything and is so masculine. Because uh, ladies' bangalore is uh, kind of uh, auspiciousness. <coughs> mm. So if lady has no bangle, especially Indian lady, is like a little inauspicious, inauspiciousness. So Radharani was thinking, oh, my devotee sells, sells bangle for, for the sake of meeting Guru Dev. So and then, and uh, then Radharani gave it to her. This is very amazing. Also, this Krishna Prema, he is initiated into Mahaprabhu Sampradaya. And he is like uh, almost Siddha, Mahatma, maybe Siddha. But still, from beginning, he did not accept Mahaprabhu's as identical with Krishna. But actually, this I feel, even though we may be ignorant, or 
or certain things, you know. But for Krishna or Radharani or Mahaprabhu personally show us reality. This is very, and then uh, that love is more increasing. Hmm. So close to Radharani, but not close to Krishna. Maybe, can this be? Maybe to do. Or, or sometimes, you know, Krishna was not recognized, so Krishna has to come. Hmm. Also, it may be. And uh, also many devotees thinking, or oh, some, some devotees may not accept Mahaprabhu as incarnation, maybe. <coughs> but uh, someone who has love Krishna mm. must <laughs> have to appear and tell him. So, I feel like in Bhagavad Gita, this Uttavaji is actually. Teshan Satata Yuktana Bajatam Priti Purbaka Dadami Bhutti Yoganta Yena Mahupayati. So that Gita say, if uh, Teshan Satata constantly meditating, constantly doing seva to Krishna, then Krishna give us intelligence mm. to, 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 to know, to, to, to come to the, come to the Krishna's place. So this is a kind of proof. Mm. Also a very strong model for Manjali Bhav. So he's, he's so close to Radharani, Radharani is so close to him that Krishna is even attracted to him. <laughs> Krishna comes to him because he's closer to Radharani. This is, this is Manjariba. Yeah, and actually, if we get to Radharani, <clears throat> then automatically we Krishna, comes. Krishna comes. Yes. In 1944, the clouds of sadness cast their shadow over Uttara Vrindavan. Yashoda Ma passed away. Krishna Prem was hit by a thunderbolt. But Ma never kept her Gopala away from her eyes even after her passing away. That day, when Krishna Prem returned to the ashram after cremating Ma's body near Dandashvara waterfall, he was too tired and slept till late at night. Towards the end of night, he heard Ma's voice. Gopala, you are still asleep. Get up. It's time for bhajan. After a little pause, she said again, Gopala, rest assured, I always live near you as I did before. Krishna Prem got up with a start and looking all around with tears in his eyes, he said, if you are so near, Ma, why can't I see you? Will I never see you again? No, Baba, she answered. You continue your sadhana. You will draw near me step by step and ultimately meet me here in this Chinmaya, this transcendental Rinda. Wow. But Ma was always... Just a minute, this is, this is interesting. So this Krishna Prema lost his Guru, Guru, Guru Ma. Hmm. Ma. He lost Ma, who is Guru Dev. And he said, I never see you again. Then Ma is saying this interesting. 
No, Baba, you continue sadhana. You will draw near me step by step and ultimately meet me here in this Chinmaya Vrindavan. Chinmaya Vrindavan is eternal Vrindavan. Where Ma lives in spiritual sorrow. <laughs> That, that say, if you slowly, slowly, <laughs> step by step, you may understand Swarupa, then by this Swarupa, you can meet me in Vrindavan. This is mad, mad word is very deep, I feel. And the message to <clears throat> all devotees is that it's gradual. Yes, it's step by step. Step by step. So, we cannot be sit uh, in in a one day, <laughs> you know, generally speaking. Maybe some special person may be, but uh, we are just ordinary devotees. So we we have to do sadhana day by day, and step by step we may advance if we follow the footstep of our Guru Dev, mm. our Guru Manja. <laughs> <clears throat> that Ma was always near Krishna Prem to guide him, even after her death. <clears throat> and, and Krishna Prem sought her advice whenever he thought it necessary. This is evident from one incident. Once, after Ma's passing away, when Krishna Prem had gone to Brindavan, Motirani and Dr. Govinda Gopala Mukopadhyaya of Varanasi were also with him. He received a telegram from his old friend, Dr. Govinda Gopal's elder brother, requesting him to go uh, to him in Vaidyanatha Dhamma before returning to Mirtola. When he was conferring with Motirani and Govinda Gopala as to whether he should go to Vaidyanatha or not, all of a sudden he got up and said, wait a minute. He went inside his room. Returning after some time, he said, Ma has bidden go at once to Mirtala. Your presence there is necessary. Immediately, he left for Mirtala. On reaching there, he found that the Pujari, whom he had entrusted the Seva service, of Takura in his absence had gone. If he had not reached there that day, Takura would not would have had to fast. Mm. <clears throat> in 1948, Krishna Prem set out on pilgrimage to the south. He visited Maharshi Ramana's ashram in Tiro Vanamalai, where he had a typical and revealing experience. When he entered the hall where the Maharshi reclined daily on his couch, he sat down in silence along with the others to meditate at his feet. But as soon as he sat down, he heard a voice questioning him again and again. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? He tried hard to ignore it, but it went on and on like an importunate visitor an unwelcome visitor, knocking at the door. 
So in the end, he just had to formulate an answer. I am Krishna's servant. At once, the question changed into, who is Krishna? He answered, Nanda's son. But the questioning went on, pauselessly. He thought of other answers, like, he is an avatar, the one in all, the resident of every heart, and so on. But the questioning would not cease, until at last he gave it up. He left the hall and returned, deeply disturbed, to meditate. But he had no peace. The voice gave him no respite, no rest, until in the end he had to evoke Radharani. <laughs> Radharani revealed the answer to him. She said, nothing exists besides Krishna, so how can he be described? You can only say that Krishna is Krishna. <laughs> Good. Krishna is Krishna. Radha, Radha. They say that Krishna is quite naughty, but this answer is quite naughty from Radharani. Yeah. Very <clears throat> Next morning, when Krishna Prem sat down again at Maharshi's feet, the Maharshi gave him a lightning glance and smiled. He understood that he was behind all that questioning. Then, as he closed his eyes to meditate, a delectable peace, a delicious peace, descended upon him. He put a question to the Maharshi in silence. And who are you, may I humbly ask? As he put this question, he had to open his eyes involuntarily to see that the coach was empty. He closed his eyes once again and opened the next moment to see that he was seated on the couch, the coach, as before. Couch. It means couch, not coach. Couch. Obviously, his disappearance implied that he was beyond Namarupa, name and form. And this was the only way in which he could answer the question from his point of view and realization as a Gyanin. The silent conversation that took place between the two great souls highlights the distinction between the jnani and the bhakta. The jnani swims in an ocean of negative peace and tranquility, which is empty, colorless, and motionless. The bhakti swims freely in an ocean of love and bliss that throbs with life and sports of the great Lord, the concentrated form of all beauty, love, and goodness. Let's think about this a minute. <laughs> yeah, this is interesting. Very good. <clears throat> so in this he said, he was beyond Nama Rupa. And then this was the only way in which he could answer the question from his point of view and the realization as a Gyani. So Gyani, its symptom is, is kind of, what is it? Discriminate. Which one is spiritual and which one is material. So therefore later on say, the negative peace hmm. because they, they don't have love just to you know just to say uh, 
discriminate, be big, just, you know, and then kind of, and then their goal is like a Brahman, no rupa and no form, and no name and no form. So this, but, uh, and uh, this tranquility, which is empty, colorless, emotionless, but the bhakta swim freely in the ocean of love and bliss that throbs with life and sports of the great Lord. The concentrated form of all beauty, love, and goodness. So completely different position, Gyani and Bhakta. <clears throat> so this is Maharishi is Gyani. This Krishna Prema is Bhakta. So this is interesting. Mm. That's a very good paragraph to meditate on, to say to everybody. A Gyani experiences God as something that can be known <clears throat> as the object of knowledge. And what's beyond that knowledge is empty. That's why it says negative. Mm -hmm. Negative peace. may be peaceful, but it's an empty space <coughs> beyond what can be known. So there's a certain knowledge of God, and then there's an experience of emptiness about what we don't know, what we don't feel. That's the jnani point of view. The bhakta point of view is that you're totally immersed in an experience of God, God as love, swimming in the ocean. There's no, as Jayananda Maharaj says, there's no distinction between what we know and what we don't know because we feel everything. Bhakta is an experience of, of feeling God, not of knowing God, of having a loving devotional relationship to God in which we're together in all senses. There's no here and there. There's no up and down. Everything is God, and we are everywhere swimming in that nectar. Mm. So, Gyani, <coughs> Gyani may know, but just a small part of knowledge. <laughs> okay. A part of knowledge. So, devotee know all, everything. That's I fear. Is it possible a little bit higher microphone? I don't know if it's possible. I feel like I'm shouting, but maybe. <coughs> oh, like that higher. Mm -hmm. huh? okay. Let me know, let us know if that uh, works now, please. Okay. It's better. Maybe a little bit better. A little bit better, yeah. Little. Oh, maybe you put it Maybe you think, but it's, it's a long distance microphone. Is it set on? Uh... No, it's not. It was... it was no, but we have the, the Einstellung, you know, for not on the computer. It might be on the computer microphone. Right. Okay. How is this now? Wonderful. That's wonderful. That is better. Okay. <clears throat> you were right. You get more of me than you want. Yeah. Bhakta is a close relationship. Close relationship to my microphone now you have. <laughs> You're swimming in the nectar of my neck. And Janana, you have to come very close. <laughs> we are close. We are very intimate. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Did you finish? Yes. I'm finished. This here from... Yeah, from Tiruvannamali, Malai, Krishna Prema went to Shirangama. He had a wonderful experience in the Shirangama temple. As soon as he prostrated himself before the Lord's image, he lost outer consciousness and saw a vast ocean made of liquid light. So he lost outer consciousness, not inner consciousness, not spiritual consciousness, <clears throat> and saw a vast ocean made of liquid light. Then there was a ripple in the ocean, and countless white lotuses 
erupted on its blue waves, one after another. And on each flower stood a lovely Krishna with Radha. Radha smiling and Krishna playing his magic flute. Krishna Prema shivered and tears flowed from his eyes as he saw this. Krishna Prema once said, if we want to reach the goal, the eternal, we have to steer the boat straight out across to the other shore. So what the mistia means? The navigate. Navigate. Straight up. <clears throat> His boat had now reached very near the other shore. On November 14th, 1965, it reached the destination. The eternal Vrindavan, where Radha and Krishna must have been waiting impatiently to give him a warm welcome. <clears throat> Krishna Prema had many Western admirers and disciples, but the number of Indians who lighted their torches at his flame was much greater. There are many Indian gurus at whose feet we can see sitting many foreign disciples, but he was perhaps the only foreigner of his time at whose feet we could see sitting many Indian disciples. Wow. Beautiful. Huh? Beautiful, huh? Before Prabhupada. Before Prabhupada. Wow. In uh, 65, he passes away. By imbibing the teaching of the great Gris of India, by filling it up, filling up the teaching, and living according to it, he had reawakened and intensified in them the awareness of their own spiritual inheritance. So it's the foreigner who comes and informs the native about the inheritance that he or she does not appreciate. It's like Proust, actually, in France. I'm from France. And Proust, one of the greatest authors in France, he went to England and published everything before he was appreciated in France. It's a bit, wow. Oh, wow. It's a bit of the same story. His three books, Krishna Prema's three books, Search for Truth, Yoga of Bhagavad Gita, and Yoga of Kapopanishad, still draw discerning seekers who feel the need for guidance in their search for the eternal and the blissful. Krishna Prema emphasized that there are two things necessary for reaching the goal. Unflinching faith and self-surrender at the feet of Sri Guru and the Lord. He defined Faith as the light which the higher personality sends to the lower. It is one's firm conviction about the eternal, which keeps the flame of aspiration alive amidst the darkness of doubt and despair. Aspiration, what Gurudev would call greed, keeps the flame of greed alive amidst the darkness of doubt and despair. So it doesn't mean that there's no darkness and despair and doubt. It means that the desire stays alive even in the doubt. They exist together. He wrote, Krishna Prema, <clears throat> I keep a whole collection of doubts. I grow them in fact, like mustard and cress. What do you mean, cress? Cress is this green plant that's... Like watercress? Watercress, that's what I'm thinking. 
Cress is English. Cress, watercress. Very fresh and light. Mm -hmm. And when they're ripe, I eat them. Mm -hmm. I say it again. I keep a whole collection of doubts. I grow them, in fact, like mustard and cress. And when they're ripe, I eat them. <laughs> My doubts. Mm -hmm. He defined, <clears throat> that's for the doubts, or that's for the faith. And then he defined self-surrender, Sharanagati, as the offering of the mortal, Ahuti, in the pure flame of the immortal. I repeat, the offering of the mortal in the pure flame of the immortal. <clears throat> Self-offering must be total and unconditional. This is Kapoor again speaking. Self-offering must be total and unconditional. It involves, says Krishna Prema, the staking of everything, the betting of everything, that does not matter for the one thing that does matter and the complete replacement of the ego by Krishna's will. Oh, this is strong words. I repeat, it involves, so surrender involves the staking or the betting of everything that does not matter for the one thing that does matter. So the betting all the material existence, all the material desires and pleasures, betting all that, saying, I give up all that on the bet that I can have the one thing that does matter, namely um, experience of the divine. The betting of everything does not matter for the one thing that does matter and the complete replacement of the ego by Krishna's will. This is maybe, <clears throat> maybe this sentence, I, I, I may not understand fully, but I feel this one. Today's, no, listen to this Guru Dev saying, complete surrender means give up doership and to become viewer. Mm. Complete surrender means uh, surrender, whatever by the will of Radha Mohan, accept. Whatever comes. Whatever comes, but just see her. Mm. Ego means we are doing. Yeah. But uh, surrender means we are not doing anything. By the will of Radha Mohan, everything happening. We are just uh, like instrument. Just we see, we are viewer, and whatever necessary thing, <laughs> we just do it. Yeah. That's I feel. What's challenging for devotees is that the act of surrender is an act of will, is an act of ego. You have to be very strong and full of self-understanding and ego in order to yeah. surrender your ego. So it's almost a paradox that it has to happen slowly and gradually without the ego mm -hmm. intervening. I find this very challenging personally. So this is letting go without wanting to let go in a way. Mm -hmm. This is every moment, twenty four seven challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that completes the, the lila of uh, Shri Krishna Prema. I wonder, do we stop at half past or continue? We can continue it. Then by Gurudev's mercy, we'll continue with chapter 29. Shri Gauru Govinda Das Babaji. It's actually pretty short. Gauru Govinda Das Babaji, whose original name was Guru Das, was born in 1879. Okay. Discipline. 
Yeah, not but the Indian time. Indian, Indian half an hour. Indian. Be careful, you don't. He was born in 1879 in Dwaribena, Dwaribena, a village near Pichalada in the district of Madinipura. His father's name was Hari Prashada Bera. Bera. While still a child, he began to exhibit signs of greatness. Unlike the other children, he was quiet, seclusive, and meditative. He was interested more in kirtan and study than in play. He surprised everybody by mastering the Sanskrit grammar called Mugda Bodha at the early age of 11. He won the hearts of the uneducated village folk by reading out to them Srimad Bhagavatam and Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita every day wow. at age 11. <laughs> He loved very much the company of Sri Madhusudana Dasa, a highly devoted Babaji, who practiced sadhana in a cottage made of straw and reeds near his home, and whom he regarded as his only friend, philosopher, and guide. Madhusudana Dasa impressed upon him the necessity of bhajan and the importance of harinam he said in this age of kali harinam and harinam alone is the means by which krishna may be realized <clears throat> this is very very famous verse from where from this is, Chaitanya think, Charitam. Uh, this is, I think, Narada, Narada Pancharatura. Okay. Anyway, oh no, maybe Naradiya Purana. This is very famous. Harena, Maharena, Maharena, Maibake Bara, Karo, Nasteva, 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 Gatiranyata. There is no difference between Krishna and his name. Unlike the names of other things, the name of Krishna, like Krishna himself, is qualified by truth, consciousness, and bliss. Sat Chit Ananda. It is as powerful and merciful as Krishna. It removes the impurities of the heart and makes it fit for the realization of Krishna and his Leela. It is both means, sadhana, and end, sadhya, so, uh, sorry, this is <coughs> may not be important, but uh, sometimes we have to remember this 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 word. Uh, goal called sadhya, and uh, the mean to attain perfection or goal that's called sadhana. And then this Mahamantra is very interesting. This sadhana and sadhya means and goal is the same. That means before perfection, we chanting holy name. Even after perfection, we also chanting holy name. So interesting, this is only, hmm. only holy name. This sadhana and sadhya is, is same. Same means, uh, you know, both existing is only Harina. Mm. This sometimes, you know, sometimes they, they may not use, but sometimes, they, you know, sadhana, this is sadhana is kind of practice, kind of discipline. Abhidaya or Sutsun? Yeah. Oh, no. Mm. Yeah, Abhidaya also, we may say, but the sadhana is kind of. Uh, uh, kind of practice. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So I repeat the last line of the verse. <clears throat> it is both means sadhana and end sadhya, 
if you take shelter under Harinam, it will protect you from all ills and pave the way for the supreme realization. That's the end of the translation. Guru Dasa took the advice of Madhusudana Das Babaji to heart. He began to chant Harinam. He would retire to some lonely place and chant Harinam for hours or collect the boys of the village and perform kirtan with them. Sometimes he lost consciousness in kirtan. This worried his father very much, who apprehended that he might renounce the world altogether and become a recluse. In the hope that a pilgrimage may bring about a change in him, he sent him out on pilgrimage with uh, Madhusudana Das Babaji. Both of them visited all the holy places in Gauramandala, including Ambika Kalana, where Gauri Dasa Pandita, a close associate of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, worshipped the deities, Nitaigar, presented him to presented to him by Nitaigar themselves. Sorry, maybe <laughs> many nodes. Is Gora Mandara or Braja Mandara? Sometimes, <clears throat> sometimes Navadip Man Mandara. The same place. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, Navadip Mandara, Gora Mandara, the same place. That means, it means like, uh, Gora Mandara is Chaitanya Mapabu does, does a uh, pastime, that kind of place. Braja Mandara is kind of Braja, which Krishna did some pastime, this kind of Braja Mandara is little, little bigger, and Gora Mandara also a little bigger. So this is kind of, we, we may say, Mahaprabhu's pastime place, or is, if say Braja Mandara is like Krishna did some kind of pastime place, kind of, kind of meaning. Mm -hmm. There, so in this place, <clears throat> Guru Dasa took mantra diksha, initiation, from Sripad Akila Chandra Goswami, a descendant of Gauri Dasa. Guru Das returned home after a year. <coughs> Pilgrimage did bring about a change in Guru Das, but not the kind of change his parents had desired. <laughs> During the pilgrimage, he had met Sri Gaura Kishora Das Babaji, who had advised him to renounce everything like Rupa and Sanatana and go to Vrindavan. Therefore, the fire of renunciation was constantly burning within him. To add fuel to the fire, he was deprived of the company of Madhusudana Das Babaji, who had, gone, who had now gone to Vrindavan to pass the rest of his life there. His father thought that the only way of cooling the fire was to marry him. Hmm. So he lost no time in arranging his marriage. On the night of marriage, Gurudas seemed to stand at a crossroad. He had to decide immediately whether he should tread the apparently rosy path of married life or the thorny path of renunciation. His mother had died only a short time before, and she had asked him to marry. He had to decide whether he should act according to the wish of his mother or follow the advice of Gaura Kishore Das Babaji. He decided to renounce. 
At night, he quietly went out of home and ran towards Navadvip to take Vesha, Vaishnava Sanyasa, from Gaurakishora Das Babaji. In, in Navadvip, he came to know that Gaurakishora Baba did not give Vesha to anyone. Therefore, he took Vesha from the Mahanta of the Bana Akana of Navadvip and was named Gaura Govinda Das. This is interesting. <clears throat> so, like a Vaishnava tradition, <clears throat> some Siddha is there, like, like Gora Kishora Das Babaji Maharaj. So, some candidate want to approach, give me Diksha or give me Besha. Mm. Besha means kind of denunciate. And Diksha means giving kind of Gayatri Mantra. Mm. And Siddha means perfection. Siddha means perfection. Mm. So, it's two kinds of person. Someone who accepts the disciple or someone, someone does not accept the disciple. Even though he's he's perfected person, but still, someone does accept the disciple, someone does not accept the disciple. So in this case, he wants to take Besha from Gorak Shodas Baj Maharaj, but uh, Gorak Shodas Baj did not give, so therefore he he went to another person. Mm -hmm. So means what I want to say, like especially for us foreign foreigner, some Indian Baba does not want to accept foreigner. Mm. Many. Mm. Mm. So therefore, you know, we have to accept. We have to. We must find, find you know find out Baba or great personality who could accept us foreigner. Disciple, hmm. yeah, that, like that Guru Dev. So, so if if he does not accept the disciple, then we have to find out another person. But many, many, many Indian hmm. Guru, especially Babaji, say no. Hmm. So, so therefore, you know, like Guru Dev is so merciful. That's what I want to say, because someone who accept means kind of how to take responsibility. That's not so easy job, actually. You know, because, yeah. you know as well. Yeah, I feel, you know, I know a little bit, but uh, <laughs> it's kind of, like uh, if, if we have many children, or if we have many houses, then we have to think always about children. So if we have 10 children, we have all, <coughs> all, all you know, always have to think about children, 10 children. If we have 10 house, then we have to, you know, maintain house. If, if many, <laughs> more <laughs> thinking. This is so, I a little bit feeling, this is interesting. So this is some Babaji does not accept. Mm. <clears throat> Babaji accept these two kinds of Baba. He then went to Sri Gauraki Shoradas Babaji for precept, for <coughs> instructions. Baba instructed him as follows <clears throat> One, maintain the dignity of your Vesha like Rupa and Sanatana. A very high standard. Wow. <laughs> Two, regard money as your enemy. Three, keep away from women. Remember how Mahaprabhu and had punished Chota Haridas for going even to an old lady for Bhiksha. Four, practice sadhana under the guidance of a Mahab Mahabhagavata or a person who has realized Krishna. Five, 
Do not develop intimacy with worldly people. Six, live on madukari, begging, obtained from Brajabasis. In 1900, Gaura Govinda Das went to Vrindavan. For some time, he kept wandering in Vrindavan, seeing the beautiful spots connected with the divine sports, the Leela of Sri Krishna and chanting Harinam. He ate what he got in Madhukari from the Brajbasis and slept under the trees. After some time, he began to live in the Samajabani of Shyamasundara temple in Vrindavan. Here, he did bhajan under the guidance of Shida Shri Jagadasi Das Babaji of Kaliada. In the evening, he read out Chaitanya Bhagavata to him in his cottage. All the rest of the time, he passed in chanting Harinam in his cottage. He found that some Vaishnavas in Vrindavan meditated upon Krishna Lila according to the Gutika or Siddha Krishna Dasa Baba of Govardhan. He also began to do the same. This is, there's a note that, there's a footnote that says that this is the, the prescribed eight stage activities throughout the day of the Krishna Lila in the forest of Raj. He also began to do the same, but while thus meditating on Krishna Lila, he could not complete his japa. He did not know whether he should give up meditation or japa. He sought the advice of Jagadisha Dasa Baba. Baba advised him to first complete his japa and then meditate upon Lila. If he had any time left after that, uh, meditate on Lila uh, japa, excuse me, if he had any time left after that. He had to give up meditation because the japa figure he had assigned for himself was so large that he had hardly any time left for meditation after japa. <clears throat> after some time, the reputation of Gauru Govinda Das as a saint spread all over Viraj, and people began to come to him for darshan. Therefore, he went to Adi, a village about four miles away from Govardhan, and began to live there. Every day he went to Govardhan from Adi and returned after performing the Parikram of Govardhan. Thus, he walked 20 miles every day, chanting Harinam. His reputation, however, kept on chasing him. The increasing crowd of his admirers did not let him live in peace, even in Adi. He had, therefore, to flee from Adi and live in a dilapidated house near Kilolakunda, at some distance to the northeast of Adi. His bhajan and parikram of Giri, Giriraja continued as before. As a natural result of prolonged bhajan, some spiritual powers automatically developed in him. He could easily read the past and future of a person. Once, he took pity on a Rajbasi in grief and consoled him by telling him many things about his past and future. <clears throat> From that, from that day, there was a decline in his humility and bhajan. In anxiety, he went to Pandita Ramakrishna Baba for advice. It was by the, it was by the mercy and advice of Pandita Baba that he succeeded 
in disengaging himself from the spiritual powers that had blocked his way in bhajan. So this is interesting. <clears throat> Sometimes also Gurudev also said, Gurudev could see, could read the past and the future, but he, he avoid, stay away. Because, you know, this kind of thing is kind of, you know, using power kind of, we may say little material thing. Then, if we using this kind of spiritual power kind of for material thing, then bhajan and humility is diminished, decline. So therefore, like uh, even Yoga Sutra mentioned, if we practicing yoga, some mystic you know, power coming. But if attached, then we cannot attain go. Or if using it for fruit, fruit yeah, activities, yeah, yeah, yeah. To kind of, kind of instrumentalizing. Fruit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of, you know. So <clears throat> therefore, uh, real sadaka. That also they don't do. They can use some power, but they don't use. Mm. This is interesting. This is. <clears throat> So <clears throat> even, even spiritual power, this so-called spiritual power, also <clears throat> blockage. We may think, you know, okay, I can read your future, you know, I can read your, you know, your past life, but uh, it's also this according to this, this also blockage. Mm. By way of giving him, giving him a warning for future, Pandita Baba said, Harinam is like a kalpataru, a desire tree. It gives to the sadhaka whatever he wants. Beware of what you want. Sorry, that was mine. That was me. Mm -hmm. It gives to the sadhaka, sadhaka whatever he wants. If while doing namajapa, a sadhaka, thinks of the powers of Krishna, it generates those powers in him. If he thinks of his love, then it instills his heart with love for Krishna. It is through the eyes of love that he enjoys the exuberant sweetness, Madhurya, of his divine Leela. Without love, one may realize Krishna, but not his Madhurya. Oh. Hmm. Without love, one may realize Krishna, but not his Madhurya. So it's like Gopi Bhav and Madhuri Bhav. We can realize Krishna with only soul consciousness. Actually, this is, I think, this without love means <clears throat> Ashwarya Baba. Means uh, thinking Krishna is God. Hmm. <clears throat> Because Madhura Baba, including also Gopi Baba and Saki Baba and Manjari Baba. So I, I think this <coughs> without love means kind of Aishwarya. Okay. Feeling. Okay. Yeah. Since the Gaura Govinda Das began to join the assembly of sadhus, which used to be held every evening for religious talks somewhere in Govardhan, under the natural leadership of Pandita Baba. One day the assembly was held in the courtyard of Nishinta Ji's temple. As soon as the assembly was over, it began to rain. Gaura Govinda Das said it would have been better if the rain had started a little later, when each one of us had returned to his kuti. Pandita Baba snubbed him by saying, what? Self-seeking? You cannot realize Krishna so long as you have the slightest desire for your own happiness. Wow, this is a very golden, golden one. Mm -hmm. 
You cannot realize Krishna so long as you have the slightest desire for your own happiness. So even wishing that it's not raining. Yes, this is also wow. Yeah, instead of surrendering to the rain. He continues, you must give up the desire for your own happiness of we or well-being in this world as well as in the celestial world and desire only the happiness of Krishna if you want to realize him. On this advice, on the advice of Pandita Baba, Gaura Govinda Das began to do bhajan in a kuti near Apsara Kunda in no. Puchari. Yeah, yeah, pu actually, Punchari, sometimes Punchari. You know, like Govardhan. Say, we go like a near go in like, like Radha Kunda Kusum Sarvada. Then, peak, going back, this place is, we say, Punchari. You know, like a round, go and back, this turning point, we say, Punchari. Hmm. And then, that place, two Kunda. Uh, Nabal Kunda and Apsara Kunda. And this near is Nirisinha Temple. So in that area, kind of end of kind of Gobarda, this called, you know, that place. Sorry. No, no, it's good. There was, um, this was a lonely place, as you said. No one lived there except him and another Mahatma in the form of Bela, in the form of a, a Bela, a wood apple tree, in front of his kuti. Another Mahatma in the form of a Bela tree, in front of his kuti, who conversed with him on topics regarding Krishna and his Leela. When the Bela tree first bore fruit, it appeared before him in human form and said, you have watered and made me grow under your care. Since my infancy, I have a request to you. When my fruits ripen, you pluck and distribute them amongst the temples and the Mahatmas of Raj for the service of Krishna. Wow. Wow. Gaura Govinda Dasa did likewise. Two more, two more pages, my dear. Yes, go, two, go. two pages. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. One day, someone came and hung his clothes over the tree. The tree asked Gaura Govinda Das not to allow anyone to hang his clothes over it because that disturbed his bhajan. Gaura Govinda Baba continued to make steady progress in bhajan. <clears throat> he could now repeat Harinam eight lakhs of times a day. Eight lakhs. You know, eight lakh means one lakh is 64 rounds. Mm. 64 <clears> rounds. <throat> times eight. <laughs> eight. Eight times. He neither woke nor slept. There you go. In a half conscious state, he was always doing japa. While doing japa, he was often overwhelmed with bhav, emotion, and danced and wept. In Adi Purana, Krishna says to Arjuna, Listen, O Arjuna, those who dance or weep before me while chanting my name, I am sold out to them. I belong to them, as I am not sold to anyone else. Gaura Govinda Baba had nothing to do except chanting Harinam and dancing and weeping before Shri Hari. <coughs> Therefore, it was natural that Shri Hari should have been sold out to him. The extent to which he was sold out to him would appear from an interesting episode. <coughs> Another episode, I think. Mm. Once Baba returned late to his kuti after Madhukari due to rain, he was very hungry. Therefore, he forgot to offer the Madhukari. 
to Krishna before eating. He was swallowing the first morsel when suddenly he realized that he was eating unoffered food. He held his throat to prevent swallowing it, but it went down. Then there was no end to his self-condemnation. His judgment of himself. Regretting. Regretting. His hunger disappeared and the Madukari lay before him untouched. At that time, a sweet voice coming from inside his cottage rang, rang into his ears. Every day you offer me the remains of the food of the Raj, Rajbasis. Will heavens fall if today you offer me the remains of your own food? Come, offer now. Do not hesitate. Gaura Govinda was thrilled to the core. A shiver went through his body. Hair stood at their ends and tears flowed from his eyes. Hesitatingly, he offered to Krishna the remains of his own food and then ate it himself. The taste of the madukari he ate that day was exceptionally delightful and ravishing. It was bound to be because that day, Krishna himself had eaten the offering with greater relish. Has anyone ever heard of a God as loving and lovable as Sri Krishna of Braj? In 1959, Gaura Govinda Das left his physical body to join the divine Leela of Sri Krishna. His Samadhi exists near Apsarakunda. That completes the Leela of Gaura Govinda Das Bhattaji. And actually, interesting, it's Baba go to Madhukari, then collecting food. Which Braja, you know, Braja, most people offer <coughs> food, you know. But still he do Madhukari, then again offer. <laughs> then after offering, eat. This is very interesting. But one day he did not offer and then so regret. Then Krishna did. And if if my remembering is, is not to eat is right. So this this samadhi, Gora Gominda, you know, Gora Gominda's Babaji Mahari Samadhi is near Apsara Kunda. And uh, this, you know, from beginning, we, we have read to Krishna Premaji. I think his worshiping deity is near, I think, in Brindava. Uh, I think near, um, let's, near Goy Bazaar, I say, uh, one, one, yeah, small temple was there. Mm. Uh, Bankande Mahadeva, near Bankande Mahadeva. If I'm my my remembrance is correct. Mm. So anyway, you know, just remembering this kind of sadhu, kind of we we also become more humble, and uh, we are more enlightening, enlightened, and uh, also we feel we are so. So degraded <laughs> compared to the, the kind of standard of their bhajan mm. is extremely high. Humbling. Yeah. So, is as a person, some comment or some questions? I don't know, Gurudev may listen. Or... So small. There is a comment. Comment. From Banana. Uh huh. Um, 
What could you be? Yeah, I can say. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. There is a command from Bandana, Rade mm -hmm. Rade. Maybe the bell tree was a tree which fruits are specially dear to Shiva. And also, these leaves are also offered to him, to mm. Shiva. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Very nice. Just a Radhe, just a, a quick question. Thank you, Janana Maharaj and Lava Maharaj. Um, just to go back to Krishna Prema, uh, we just talked, right? He was saying this idea of kind of betting everything for just having that experience with the divine. Um, and to do this required, was it, it was complete surrender. And we touched on it lightly. And, and I thought you, you brought up something that I've also been wrestling with, especially these last few weeks when it comes to surrendering, but doing so with my ego or standing next to my ego. Um, and I wonder if this is when Gurudev reminds us to always, in each moment, to, to check yourself. So, and as far as I understand it, and when I, when I ask myself this, to surrender, it's where is that? You know, from what space is that coming from? Is this how one kind of does this next to their ego or with their ego? Because it sounds difficult to me to say, well, do so without your ego. Mm -hmm. And I have this problem. I'm always thinking, I'm always questioning, always trying to rationalize. But I say, okay, so I acknowledge it and I keep it next to me. But how can I do it? How can one completely surrender? <clears throat> Just to add. I'm really glad you, you brought this up again because, like I said, personally, it's, I find it very challenging to, like you. <laughs> and also, per, very personally, I put it in, ter in a term of language. I say to myself, it surrenders. Not I surrender. It surrenders, it surrenders in me. Mm. It is, I mean, you can, it's an English language trick we can we anglophones can do mm -hmm. in other languages it surrenders there's something being surrenders in me mm. god surrenders in me it's not i surrender i choose and i willfully, willfully change reality no it's i let it surrender in me mm. or even take the i out of it right. it so surrenders kind of in that in mm. that kind of uh sorry <laughs> Yeah, I like how you put it because then I guess this reminds, in saying that, it reminds you of what is your identity. Mm. So you're taking the position of, well, this is, you know, the soul identity. So by saying, uh, instead of saying, you know, I surrender, it is it surrenders. Mm. Mm. And also maybe, <coughs> I don't know, maybe I'm correct or I don't know. If Shastra also mentioned, if we we buy some dog from shop. Mm -hmm. Like, say, when we say, this kind of theoretically, maybe, you know, if, say, I said to you, Radha, I said to you, Krishna, you know, I said to you, Krishna, means surrendering. That belong to Radha. If say if 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 we buy from shop some dog, dog's owner is dog is dog's owner's property. So like uh, one day, Sanatana Goswami want to commit suicide in front of Jagannatharata. The Mahaprabhu has know his heart. Hey Sanatana. Why you can commit suicide? Your body belongs to me. Why you, you abandon others' property? Why you destroy others' property? 
You say surrender to me means your body is mine. Why you say I commit suicide? Your body is not you. Your body is mine. Mahaprabhu say, wouldn't you say same about soul? Yeah. Mm. And then Sanatana Goswami said, realize, oh my God. Yeah, actually, surrendering means, you know, it, we cannot claim this body is mm. mine. So, so in this story, so of course, you know, this day by day practice, I cannot say I'm also surrendering. I cannot say, but uh, surrendering means nothing my property. Like I said, may, you know, I, have may, I may have house, I may have money, I may have a student, or I may have family member, but nothing belongs to me. This Radharani give to me, or actually entrust me to, to, to take care. So that kind of consciousness is, is slowly, slowly changing due to, due to surrendering. So we are thinking, this is my body, this is my money, this is my wife, this is my children, like kind of consciousness. Mm -hmm. But slowly, slowly, we answer, oh, actually, this is not my, actually, this Radharani give me this, this, this person to me, mm -hmm. to take care. Or Radharani give to this money, which, you know, take care of my family member to serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. Kind of, this kind of mentality, slowly, slowly, by the, by the mercy of Guru Dev, we are understanding. Also, Gurudev said once, surrender means give your ego, to, your false ego to Gurudev. Hmm. Means nothing belongs to me. All my property is Gurudev's property. Hmm. So, that's very difficult to accept. Yeah, this difficult, you know, it takes time, but uh, but the reality is like this. So I also, I'm not understanding fully, but uh, I try to think, oh, who am I? What is my property? Hmm. Well, nothing. Actually, Even what is given to you is loaned to you. It's not given. Yeah. Actually, we are kind of borrowing. Borrowing it. Hmm. Like, like I say, in Japan, maybe other country also, I, I buy house, borrow money, and then pay, right. you know, pay mortgage, but finished. Still, we have to pay some tax for the, you know, country. Mm -hmm. Every year, some certain tax we pay. That means this property is not mine. This, no this, this, this belong to, you know, country mm -hmm. also belong to God. Because after after this, after my this, I cannot bring my 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 dear states, my house. Mm. Impossible. So so this is kind of slowly, slowly kind of we could understanding. We say I surrender. Actually, I many I, I surrender many times. You know, when I join, I <laughs> You know, okay, I surrender. I gave up everything, you know, cut relations, everything. Mm -hmm. But uh, external surrendering, but in internally is not surrendering. Mm -hmm. You know, some attachment. So this, I think because this... You, as you said before, the body is not mine. If everything, the land, <laughs> yeah. the universe is to God, why are we fighting? That's for what the reason why we're fighting. Yeah, because... The ego is there. Yeah, because... You you are so ready to say guru, to Guru Dev, mm. to give to him. It's, that's it. Mm. And Guru Dev surrendered to the Supreme. That's yes. the parapara. <laughs> yeah, Isn't so, mm -hmm. yes, true. And, uh, you know, externally we are surrendering. Mm -hmm. But internally still attachment is there, means we are not really surrendering. Mm. You know, this kind of surrendering, you know, gradual process, step-by-step -step process, I feel. You know, external surrendering is easy, more easy, but internal attachment is is not so easy. <laughs> That's you I'm like to have your house. <laughs> yes. If so, you've you've surrendered to your house, you surrender to all. 
Well, yeah. So we I have nothing. We come. <laughs> Look, you are near near the point. We come with nothing, and we can, and we go with nothing. What we go, what we come, and what we go, we come only for love. Wow. That's all. It's not your property home. You buy because you make some working. But working, if you do for you, is your ego. If you do for the Lord and for the devotee, you surrender. Mm. I have nothing mm. you have to say. I'm yours. You are mine. Wow. That's the surrender. You surrender the beauty. You surrender to everything. To love. In the love, there is everything, my ideas. So that's the, con the conclusion and the new era. And the premise. Huh? <laughs> 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 when Krishna finished the Mahabharat, the program of the Mahabharat, what's that? All the ego out. The Navi who remain. The Pandava. It deprives the devotee of the Pandava. And they restart a new era. When Krishna sees the sun with Draupadi, because Draupadi suffers so much for all this problem of ego. Mm -hmm. During time, Tritaras, tri mix and mix, Tritaras. Sometimes he was okay, and sometimes because his touchment of his ego to the sun, to the family, to all the business, to the rain. But the rain is not his rain. And they fight for what? And the Pandava, they tolerate so much, the 11, 12 years in, in exile, and then they make so many bad things to them because they have so ego. They want their property. All of the question in this world is property. And you, if you say that it is not my property, my body is not mine, mm -hmm. you are not in the property. So at the end, if you want it completely, as you want in that question, surrender to the ego, surrender to, to the one that you make you happy. But first you have to be happy. Uh, because yeah. <laughs> stop now. Okay. Now because okay. okay. he flew. Thank you. I, for example, I am happy. Uh, if I am happy, I can make you happy. But if you are not happy, how can you make me happy? Yes. Uh, surrender. So thank you very much for Radhe, Radhe. Radhe. Thank you. Thank you for thank you, thank you for thank you for